welcome to another episode of XGR. In the morning. <laughs> Joining me, as usual, is Geeky Girl Anastasia. Hey there. The stay-at-home dad, Rick Tor. Hello. And, as your usual, let's kick it off with the news. So now, first in the news, I'll go first with one of my with my smaller stories and my big one last. But smaller story: Assassin's Creed creator fired from Ubisoft. I realised calling that a small story may be offensive. That wasn't the intent. I just meant it's one of my small. I go with one big one, too small. Apparently, he joined just rejoined the company two months ago, and he's been fired. Ubisoft say, and they printed up this statement, the good faith discussions between Patrice and Ubisoft aimed at alleg- uh, allegating or alleging Patrice's and the studio's visions have been inconclusive. As a result, Patrice has left the studio. Our priorities remain with the, ter- with the teams already hard at work on projects and development. They are at the root of Ubisoft's Montreal past and future successes. However, the guy fired said, contrary to any statement made earlier today, this morning I was terminated by Ubisoft. I, w- I was notified of this termination in person, handed a termination notice, and was unceremoni- unceremoniously escorted out of the building by two guards without being able to even say goodbye to my team or collect my personal belongings. So, yeah. And apparently he plans to try and sue him to get his team back and his rights to game, games and stuff. What's your guys' opinion on that? That's really biggish. Yeah, it is. That scenario sounds like something I've seen where the two guys come up and they're like, teachers. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> yeah, like but... every sitcom ever. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that's, that's kind of asshole. Like, you kind of expect them to have that, like super PC looking front of like, oh, we, we couldn't reach an agreement and then the guy's just like, no, 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 they fired me. Like, I can totally picture that that's yeah. what And they just are like, try to sugarcoat it, as it were. Yeah, we, we come to like a mutual agreement. I was dragged away by security. <laughs> the guy dressed as Altair came up behind me and said, sleep. Both parties got great success from our, from this departure. I couldn't even collect my stuff. <laughs> of course, I need to leave immediately. <laughs> yep. Wait, my son's in Oz. You need to leave now. We also get him too. <laughs> it was bring your daughter to work day. Uh, you can get her later. <laughs> Brilliant. But yeah, it, I'm going to say something on record here quickly. In my opinion, Ubisoft. Yeah, they've had, they they built up a great reputation with me, at least as an individual, as a consumer and stuff, in the last year or two. And then in this last year, they destroyed it. Because <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, cool, we know gamers want zombie horrors, survival, we've given you zombie you. Great game. It's like, gamers want platforming stuff on the Wii U, so we're going to do Rayman Legends. It's going multi-platform, and they screwed over the Wii U version, which is already completed, and they're just refusing to release it, so it has to be released with the 360 version. <laughs> which even made the developers protest it. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of dickish. Yeah, so, yeah. Anywho, second small bit of news. The economy of Diablo 3 is in jeopardy. Thanks to a small, tiny little glitch that appears to have been made in the auction house since patch 1.0.8. Some users have been able to generate billions, and I mean billions, of in-game currency within mere minutes with a simple procedure. However, for those that stole and stuff, Blizzard is currently in the process of reviewing the accounts involved taking appropriate actions, including temporary locks, suspensions, and or permabands. And they're also looking at roll rollbacks so everyone's currency and stuff goes back to what it was before this patch. So, yeah. Don't know how you guys feel about that one. Well, I don't play any, like, Blizzard stuff, but 
if I was someone, like, I could just imagine, like, other people who would literally, that's all they do, they'd be pretty pissed. I can imagine them not, I don't really see them being pissed at Blizzard as much as Blizzard knows the mistake. I can see them being a little annoyed that people are exploiting this to try and get shitloads of in-game money. Yeah. But... I can imagine the people that exploited it are pissed off, but at the end of the day, if you exploit something like that, you deserve to be fucked up. Yeah, like, w when there's something like that and you do it, you have to expect that something yeah. bad will happen. They're yeah. knowingly doing something. I'm just it's talking like... to the people like my cousin that literally have no <laughs> other likes. You're taking away the one thing that he has. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to be fair, he's taking away the one thing he has if he did that. It's like, it's like, it's like there was 360 fans bitching, but Microsoft blocked their account. Oh, the 360 was my only way to play with my friends online. It was my only way to enjoy it. And I was like, oh, I kind of feel sorry for this person. Yeah, they flashed their genitalia on the on the Xbox camera. And as well as that, had a hacked Xbox. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. No, I feel so sorry for you. you, you yeah, you deserve to not only be banned, I'm surprised you don't get jail time. Yeah. What, what they should do, whenever they do that to someone, they need to also send out the Obi-Wan. <laughs> yep. I and, don't say that because the World of Warcraft get my cousin off of loving Nazi stuff, so. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's better needs to be a shirt. Like, you know, all the, like, the collection of Nazi games and Nazi, like, memorabilia. So. Hey, as I've said in the past, say what you like about Hitler. When he was around, at least the trains ran on time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but anyway, and now, big news time. I, I, I felt that was needed. <laughs> EA has now got the exclusive rights to the Star Wars franchise to make games. They've already announced no games will be coming out before April 2014. However, three studios are currently working on titles. Bam! Battlefield direct developer DICE. BAM! Dead Space developer Versa, Visceral, or however you pronounce it. And lastly, BAM! Technically they listed it as Mass Effect developer, but fuck you. This is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic developer, Bioware. Jaden. Oh. <laughs> I'd add that, because you had the sound effect. I'm, I'm sorry, we're having technical difficulty here while well, I kick Richter from the conversation. <laughs> I'm, ki I'm kidding, I had Jade Empire, that wasn't bad. But no, what do you guys feel about that, these big Star Wars news? Well, the last time I played Star Wars was Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the PSP, which I unlocked the literally everything. <laughs> so, and that was, what, 2011? 2008? Uh, 2011, oh my god. It, it, it's like I'm going to need a time team to dig up these uh, like artifacts. Ooh, a fossil buff brush that <laughs> dust off her PSP. Uh, it's so primitive. <laughs> it's so primitive, you can't... It? What is this, 1980? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? You can't play PS3 games? Like, oh, that's so primitive. <laughs> what? No PS4 compatibility? What the shit is it? Did they just defrost you? But no... It's, but no, it's with the. I I loved Battlefront. I loved Battlefront one and two. Loved them, and I loved the Knights of the Old Republic series. That's my hope that we get games like that. I'm hoping that with Bioware we get a Knights of the Old Republic style game. It's pretty much a given. And I'm hoping with the fact they got two different shooter people working on games. Please just make it Battlefront three. We want Battlefront three. <laughs> Hell, I don't even care if you want to spin it off and just be like, you know. We realised in like a public, I don't know, PR stunt, we realised we've upset fans by cancelling the Clone Wars. Here you go, Battlefront Clone Wars. I don't care, it's a Battlefront game. Maybe Visceral will make a, a Boba Fett survival horror game. Yes. Where you like literally have to hunt them down. <laughs> Need for speed, pod, pod racing underground. <laughs> That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> uh, Droid developer tycoon. <laughs> Droid developer. <laughs> that would be awesome. 
I actually did also play, like, if you ever went to the movie theaters and they had that pod racing arcade game. Oh, yeah. I also played that. That one's cool. I'm hoping they do Sim Death Star. <laughs> <laughs> Make your own Death Star. And you know what? You know what? When I build it, that little hole where they can easily fire for it like a bullet. For it. I'm going to patch that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that'd be awesome if they had, like, Death Star Tycoon, where you have to, like, hire your own, like, stormtroopers, and you have to, like, work really, really hard to get them to not, like, miss every single shot. <laughs> yeah, but they need to take the piss out the Maxis style genre, like the Sim City and stuff, and it needs to be like, oh, this, co- this worker is currently unhappy with his level of pay. What do you want to do, Force Joke? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty safe, fourth joke. Fourth joke. Oh, the morale's suddenly gone up and the complaints <laughs> the complaints have stopped. Good would, job. Would Good job, Vader. Open up the airlock and you see them crash into the um, Millennium Falcon. <laughs> I'm also picturing Vader in his chair. The dome comes down, lands on top of his head like it doesn't clicks on, put fits to his suit, he then turns around with a coffee cup with number one bars. <laughs> oh, like in space balls or something? <laughs> It'd be fucking epic. But... I picture the Emperor calls him and they both start talking in Simish. And it'd just be <laughs> and it's like Simish but then with that breathing. <laughs> 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 That'd be the greatest thing ever. <laughs> When in some weird way, an alien then talks to him, and it's in English. <laughs> <laughs> but, a- anywho, that was my news. On to one of you two. Alright, I'll go now. Alright, so I got um, two uh, Nintendo news and one PlayStation. So, first off, like a tiny bit. So, RuneScape 3 possibly could come out on Wii U. <gasps> What's RuneScape, you ask? Obviously, you're not a 90s kid. There was a RuneScape oh, 2? What? I said there was a RuneScape 2. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first one. I honestly haven't heard of a second one. But RuneScape 3 possibly on Wii U. Um, I checked it out, and the graphics look exactly the same from RuneScape 1, so um, I don't know why it's 3. Um, and I'm just sure like, maybe the gameplay is different, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, and I'm just surprised that they actually, like, was there, like, a need for this? Did people ask for this? Like, does anybody still remember what RuneScape is? Like... I don't know, I just found it, like, hilarious, like, because that's what I posted on my Facebook. Hey, remember this? Then you're a 90s kid. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. I, well, see, what I think's happened with this is people have been protesting, we want a third game, we want a third game, and Valve and stuff have looked at them for, you know what, it's possible they're talking about Half-Life. No, no, they're not talking about Half-Life. But let's, just, <laughs> t- let's just ship all these comments over to the RuneScape people. It's clearly RuneScape 3. <laughs> Even though they never had a 2, we're going to give them a 3. <laughs> who, care, who cares if the third one looks exactly the same as the first one? It works for Call of Duty. Okay. And it's, that, that joke's even sadder because I'm going to buy ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then going to PlayStation bit. Now, the PlayStation Store, um, I got this from the PlayStation Universe, and they had the best title for an article ever. It was... PlayStation Mobile games um games will ruin your soul and dreams <laughs> with its ugliness. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So there's this game called the Vita Bounce, and I looked at the description on the site, and literally the description of the game is Vita Bounce. It's red as soup. Therefore, play it. And I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> And I was I looked it up because I didn't believe it, so I went in the PlayStation store, and they said, it's red as soup, play, therefore play it. And that's the description of the game. I'm like, wow, it's red as soup. It's drinkable and possibly heals me when I'm sick. And tastes like melted cheese. And like, <laughs> I want to know what that means, is red as soup. Oh, yeah, chicken noodle. Fuck yeah. Like... <laughs> See, it's a shame that's not made by EA, because then it, you could have looks like soup, and then DLC looks like soup with croutons. 
Well, no cracker juice. The, um, the thing yeah. with, the thing that EA would do is they would give you sp um, soup, but you can't actually eat it. You need to download the spoon. <laughs> <laughs> the spoon you must always have the soup stuff. connected to online. Yeah. <laughs> I just found that, like, really freaking hilarious. That, like, that's, that's, I mean, I'm sure it will change it now, but, like, that's <laughs> really funny. Okay, and then this is a bit of news. Maybe it'll make Mo happy. Luigi's Mansion and Lego City for a 3DS is number is um in the top 10 games on for the 3DS in the UK. So nice. it's been freaking awesome, and I'm eventually going to get those games, and I'm glad they're still popular, and they're really good, because eventually when uh, June comes and I get my Animal Crossing 3DS, I'm going to buy, like, all the 3DS games that have no money. So I'm looking <laughs> forward to that, except for the no money part. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm so glad it's doing good. Woo! Okay, that's my news. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, for my first bit of news, uh, Bethesda announced a new Wolfenstein game for uh, 360, PS3, and the PC. Now, I, you know, I, I played a little bit back in the day of the old, old good one, but uh, three, I think it was on the Xbox, wasn't that good. So. Uh, We'll see how that ends up, but it's at least interesting that they are trying to resurrect that IP because I think it's been, uh, I want to say, like eight-plus years since they've had a Wolfenstein game. Uh, I actually had something funny to do with that. Oh? Wolfenstein? Yeah. yeah. It almost made my news, ironically. Uh -huh. the, one of the people who made Epic Mickey 2, or one of, one of the ones who made Epic Mickey, apparently has been very vocal about the new Wolfenstein. Uh-huh. He's like, this is the problem with video games, and I'm out living at the moment, I haven't wrote this down at the moment, because like I said, I deleted it and I replaced right. it with something else, but it was like, this is the problem with video games at the moment, you try and do something new, you try and push boundaries and no one's interested, but you make another game of a first person shooter in a series and suddenly it'll sell millions. <laughs> It was so temp it's so tempting for people like me to just give up on creativity and just say, fuck it, we'll do a shooter. Yeah, okay, it's got a gun. Go. <laughs> and I'm like, I oh my god, this guy has the balls to say this. Sadly, he will never work again, but he has <laughs> the balls to say this. I'm kidding with it never working again, but insulting generic shooters, yeah, that rules out EA, Aclavision... <laughs> It'd be funny if you hired on to do that. <laughs> well, see, that's like the Facebook comment that I saw earlier, where they so they showed a guy have to jump over a pitfall and then continue on their mission, and that was games back then. Now, games today is guy overly muscle size has a gun, has to jump over a pitfall, continue on your way. <laughs> but jumping is DLC. <laughs> you never played that game, did you? There, there was actually a game called DLC Quest where it was made fun of that, and you actually had to buy the ability to run right. <laughs> and, like, you had to buy jumping, and you bought, uh, I think, pause. You, like, could buy the pause function. It was hilarious. But... Oh, no, oh. That, that wasn't done ironically. That was just an oh, EA game. That was an EA <laughs> They published an EA game. <laughs> or that was Street Fighter X Tekken. <laughs> New character, guy facing right. <laughs> After saying you need Okuna, like, you could actually using your um using your like not like money but like I guess your ability level up stuff. You could buy the ability to jump. You didn't need to jump, and you'd never ever need to jump in the game. But you could buy the ability to jump if you wanted, if it so pleases you. <laughs> nice. nice. I I still loved the Capcom thing, which I was joking off them with Street Fighter X Tekken. Apparently. Where you actually had to buy additional colors. <laughs> they were free, but they were obviously on the desk. So it's like, what? I have to download the color blue? <laughs> like, yeah, they had like no colors in the, the vanilla game. <laughs> it was like, look, a brown and a silver, and you're like, really? I think, or wasn't it black and white or something stupid like that? You should already enjoy your special like, edition of oh. gray. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Okay, my uh, next piece of news is that they put a date to the new Vault Hunter DLC available for uh, Borderlands 2. On May 14th, they will release the, I think you pronounce it Krieg, I don't know, but uh, he's the newest Vault Hunter, and he's a psycho. 
And he, they had some gameplay videos in before, so it's, that part's not really news, but now that they have a date for it. And uh, he looks kind of cool. I would like to try him out. I don't know if he'll be separate. I doubt he'll be included in the season pass because they're kind of dickish like that, and I know the Mechromancer wasn't. But uh, we shall see how he turns out. Please tell me, please tell me not right now, that the trailer for this goes along mm-hmm. the lines of, from the people that ruined Aliens, <laughs> comes DLC <laughs> for the one game they did right. <laughs> <laughs> from the game that they took that sweet Aliens money for. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because, because Aliens flopped, they need your money elsewhere. See DLC coming in all their old games. <laughs> the the people that actually you know that they licensed out aliens to um, I forget their name offhand, but those people are like have a, <laughs> they like don't have any money. They filed for bankruptcy and they owe like thirty four dollars to a local pizza place is one of the things that they owe, which is kind of sad. Oh, <laughs> you can't that is afford sad. Thirty four dollar pizza tap. <laughs> but um, my my last piece of news ties in with uh all this EA love we have going around, <laughs> and that they announced that they will not pay to use the names or likenesses of real guns in their games. Now, that does not mean they will not use them. They're just not going to pay anymore. They're just going to be like, F it, we, can, we, we think we can legally get away with just putting them in there, so we're not going to give any money to them, which, you know, there, there might be some legal merit to this, and, but it's hella ballsy to just, <laughs> just be like, nah, fuck them. We're not going to pay you. I agree, it is, hell, it is ballsy. I will admit, yes, we've been b- making fun of EA for this, uh, for during this review. <laughs> However, I am genuinely excited for like the idea of the Star Wars, like, Bioware game and stuff, so there is some good stuff there. And to be fair to EA, if by law they don't have to pay for it, why should they, to be to, in all yeah. honesty? Yeah, it's, it's like, true. if you go to a museum... There's a box there that with a little box on it. It says donation. We all know for a fact they want you to donate, but they're not going to force you to. So you just look at the box and just go, eh, maybe next time. Now you look at the box and you take the money that's inside it. Well, no, because that would be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, some people suggested that they aren't going to do it because with that, uh, with the school shootings over here in America that they... Uh, that the NRA, I think, was trying to throw video games under the bus. So there, some people are looking at it as the video game company's like, wait, you're trying to say that it's our fault? Well, fine, I'm not going to pay you a dime to use your stupid gun. Oh, that's something we need to have in a discussion on this show for one of the main discussions, uh-huh. the violence and video game stuff, because too many people have been riding that gravy boat. Sure. That's true. Yeah, that's we'll, of- we'll wait. We'll, like everyone else, we'll just wait till we're out of the, out of ideas and then do that. Oh, we'll wait till we get a special guest, Jack Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> we should do that and then just drug up Marcus and just let him ramble. But <laughs> like, oh, so you think that the goddamn targeting on these guns is what's causing it? I know, about uh, to Jack Thompson's credit, he he clearly has merit in what he says. People clearly listen to him. I mean. <laughs> Look what happened when he went after Rockstar. He targeted Grand Theft Auto 3. Clearly, Rockstar is now a struggling company going bankrupt. <laughs> what, what What was that? There's been shitloads of GTA 5 news this week. Okay, then. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> At some point on this, we need to talk about GTA 5. We keep avoiding it on the news. Oh, yeah. Because I've been leaving it because I assumed one of you guys was going to pick it up. <laughs> well, I, well, I haven't watched any of the trailers just because of Four was kind of disappointing, so I'm not Four. sure how much I want to watch. Okay, okay I'll, I'll discuss it a little bit here by well news. Check this out, Richter. They've mentioned it's a love note to all Rockstar games. Okay. The car system. You can now customize the cars like you could in, was what was it, something like Mid- Midnight Los Angeles or something hmm. like that. Okay. The shooting mechanics comes from the Max Payne games. And just little stuff like this. It's like they're taking the best of everything oh, nice. and blend it to this. While it's still a little too realistic for my liking, because I preferred GTA when it was wacky and cartoony, it still looks like they've done a hell of an impressive job. And I'm going to be honest, I'm going to buy that game. I aspire to get a Saints Row game eventually. <laughs> or it's not a Saints Row game. Uh, game bleh. 
Yeah, you know. Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I want to play Saints Row 4, but that's a different discussion. And thanks, um, <laughs> thanks for, you know, disproving that theory that goes around the internet that girls know nothing about games. I know nothing about games. <laughs> I, <don't think laughs> I was kidding, I was kidding. Except for and, a week of you. But let's move on to what games we've played this week. Gap from, that was the gap for music. And now, three, two, one. So, Richter, since you went last this time, you can go first this time. Oh, take nice. us take us away, Richter. What have you played this week? Okay, uh, I have played two 3DS games, one of which is Monster Hunter. And uh, I'm pretty sure someone else will talk more in detail about that, but I am still enjoying it. No, no, I can talk you, with you at the same oh, time. Oh, sure, okay. Awesome game. Ish. I am glad you like it. Ish. Yeah, there's there's <laughs> definitely stuff that uh, <laughs> even even if you're have played them, there's still stuff that's just dumb as hell. <laughs> yeah, I don't like you're the like, fact. <laughs> my weapon's Sorry. sword and shield. Mm-hmm. I will, whenever I go against any of the big monsters, we have to destroy. The reason I take most of my damage is one little like two or three fucking hits, and I have to stop and go sharpy 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 sharpy. <laughs> Ah, die, giant rabbit. Sharpie, 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 sharpie. <laughs> However, the 3DS game with that, the, the Crispy has been playing me with that on the Wii U and he's been joining up. It's oh, it's it's brilliant playing with that in that with that style. You totally need to do that at one point, Richter. I'd love to. Ironically, the 3DS has an advantage over the Wii U version in that. Oh, really? At least I couldn't find it on the Wii U version. Mm-hmm. Crispy found the button where he clicks it, and it can instantly search for friends, and it finds the Wii U console instantly. Oh, wow. And then, boom, we 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 put a party together, and we're starting to go through stuff and kill everything and all that. But, yeah, that, that, that's all I'm going to say about Monster Hunter 3. Okay. Yeah, I like it, too. Um, hmm? Oh, okay. The, uh... Other game I was playing on the 3DS, I recently picked up Code of Princess, and it is a side-scrolling beat 'em up, uh, <laughs> ridiculously like Guardian Heroes. Oh God, is it another Mario spin-off about Peach? It... <laughs> <laughs> I actually had that game, the Super Princess Peach. Anyway, um, no, it's not. It's a uh, more like Final Fight. Uh, it's it's pretty fun. I'm liking it. I like that the missions are very bite-sized since it's a portable console. It's good, you know, each mission's like less than five minutes, basically. Even all the campaign, there's, and there's lots of characters you can unlock. And uh, there's multiplayer, which I haven't tried, and as far as I understand it, it's nigh impossible to actually find someone playing it unless you specifically set it up to play with, like, a friend or something. But there's lots of stuff to unlock, lots of equipment and tons of stages and stuff, which is pretty cool. The only downsides are that it's hard to see some of the action because the screen is so small. And if you've ever played Guardian Heroes, there are times where the screen will kind of zoom out when there's lots of enemies, so you can, you know, it's you can actually see around you. Problem is that that makes your character really small, and it's hard to get, you know, like you're trying to block an enemy or avoid them or whatever. It can be kind of hard to see where you are and because the d-pad and the, well, I use the d-pad more because it seems it feels a little better but it's still the the d-pad and the analog uh, the circle pad excuse me are kind of small so it's sometimes hard to get the movements down but other than that i'm actually enjoying it so far and the last game i played this week was uh it was free for playstation plus i might still be i don't know but i think it was at least a couple weeks ago in the u.s is called labyrinth legends and it's kind of a gauntlet style game can you play as david bowie no that would make the game better <laughs> and if none of you out there listening to this get that reference you're way too young <laughs> <laughs> you are not allowed to play grand theft auto or <laughs> anything we mentioned but yeah it's uh i don't know it's it's an okay game i didn't like it a whole lot uh, it's uh kind of cartoony which i'm fine with but it's the controls are kind of weird and it's honestly just not a whole lot of fun. It's kind of boring. So, I don't know. I, I would not have purchased it if it wasn't a free one. And so I decided to try it. And, yeah, I'm glad I didn't pay for it. 
So those are my games this week. And cool. And how about you, Geeky Girl? So, basically, this week I have been playing a game that a certain Australian that bears a resemblance to the director of Lord of the Rings movies introduced me to. <laughs> um, it's a game develop um, game developer tycoon or game dev tycoon, mm. and that game is so freaking addicting. I literally have stayed up to like four in the morning playing it. Yep, and that's I, the game. That's the game I told you about before. Tachi had it with the the when I laughed like fuck at the piracy thing. Yeah, that was oh, yeah. awesome. People actually found an <laughs> in-game way to pirate it. No, no, it was the fact that the people who made the game literally gave up this fake copy on pirate phone, so if you download it pirated, in the game, people will then start pirating your games and cause your company to go bankrupt, teaching you <laughs> a moral lesson. Well, the best part was then the people that pirated it were going on message boards and be like, why won't people play my, pay for the game? This is pissing me off. <laughs> so you have pirates yelling about, complaining about pirates, which is, that, that felt like everything was right with the world right at that moment in time. <laughs> it's like a Delicious. message about, um, like they, on their page they had like a warning or something about supporting stuff and pirating it, which I like. <laughs> and I also like all like the freaking, it goes from like 80s tech all the way to like modern day. So like, I'm starting off with freaking like computer shit that's like text based, and then then the the, the part that I've gotten so far is the um what was it the play system two, <laughs> <laughs> is what they called it you know, and no wait no 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 they had the M box that's as far as I got <laughs> the M box I don't know what the M stands for but that's as far as I got and my company keeps going bankrupt because we spent all the money in the new computers. But then I had to pay eight thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand dollars to the bank for some other thing I did in the past. So I think I, I can't like. Usually when you die, it lets you um go back to the save point. But my save point is right before I die, so it keeps respawning me right before I die. And I was gonna say the M box is obviously Neo Geo. <laughs> and it's shaped like an M. Nice. And you can like, choose what technology to invest into. Like, I have yet to like make a better game engine because it costs like a bajillion dollars. But like, I have researched like branching story arcs and Easter eggs and new topics. But the thing I love is that you can like create your own combinations. The thing I love about this is you can create your own combinations. And, like, I made, like, a surgery, an M-rated surgery simulation game. <laughs> and that was pretty friggin' awesome. Nice. So I made, like, well, then I made another surgery simulation game for young kids that did a lot better for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> like, All those kids want to grow up to my target audience. So at least the same thing again, because I trashed that game. So I made it for younger kids, um, like, between the ages of, like, five and, like, eleven. And that was a hit. <laughs> did, you, did, did you make the game I've been asking for for years? What okay, game is that? Zombie Cooking Mama, where she teaches you how to chop up human flesh and cook it properly. Oh, no. Uh, better than Mama. <laughs> <laughs> no, she made Dr. Mario. <laughs> I'd so fucking buy that game. <laughs> But I'm still making strange combinations of stuff. Like, I made a game that's supposed to be, like, educational, but it was all about, um, freaking, um, it was all about being a werewolf or something. <laughs> like, it wasn't really about, like, education at all. It was, like, an action werewolf game. Nice. nice. And I imagine if they tried to make educational, he's, like, teaching you, like, A is for alienate. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll, like, you know, get them all alone and then take off the weak ones by themselves, or I don't know. Yeah, like type in the word, so he'll eat, he'll yeah, eat he somebody. Yeah, he would be like batshit crazy. That's what you become after you turn into a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or like, I don't know. <laughs> but it's awesome. And I have to, I hate that I have to give my workers vacation, though. It's really freaking annoying. Because then, <laughs> I have to, like, I am terrible. Like, but, like, I only have, like, two freaking people working besides myself. So, I mean, like, in the other um, levels, I've had more people, but then you run out of money. 
um, because you have to pay them all, and they have like, and the better they are, the more expensive they are. So oh, it's bankrupt, or you can hardly produce anything <laughs> because I always have to keep taking vacations. God damn, I want my sweatshops. I said, damn it, that's weird. I thought you were playing game developer tycoon, not Ubisoft tycoon. Ha! <laughs> when you fire them. <laughs> yeah, and then hire them back two weeks later to then fire them again. Just she's running out of way. money, though. She's probably playing THQ Dev Tycoon. <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, like, cause, like, sometimes you can't tell whether a game's going to be great or not. Because I actually looked up, I, I'm going to admit, that I looked up, because um, sometimes we give you a good combo bonus, or people will give you a high score in your ratings for good combos. But I looked hmm. up a list of supposedly good combos, and I don't think that works, because <laughs> I um, actually used, like, from this walkthrough that I had, I actually used the list of combos that I had on there, and I, I did really terrible, and they kept saying strange combo. So I think and, that might be a troll walkthrough. And of course she's playing the THQ walkthrough. Didn't you hear a few moments ago, though, Richter? Uh-huh. She said she hasn't, she hasn't given us a new game engine for years. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Those game engines cost like $400,000. <laughs> yeah, I was going to make an epic joke at that, but I thought yours better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I wanted, I didn't want to make a new game engine until I researched everything to put everything in it, because otherwise you're making mm. a game engine with like nothing in it that can make it do anything right. that's new, unless you research a lot of stuff. So it's it would like, be worth it. <laughs> it's, like we, it's like we have Cody the Desma right here with us. Maybe <laughs> next year. <laughs> Cool, he looked as I should say. Yeah. Maybe I just changed his name for copy. Uh, so I did like, um, I don't like how expensive it is to put a booth at, at Games, 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 or G3, you know? Because, <laughs> like, you cost you, like, a friggin' million, um, two million dollars to put a booth in in um, the Game Con. Two billion dollars. I, I, I'm pretty sure there are people with booths who do not have two million dollars. Like, like seriously, that's like crazy. I'm pretty sure all the indie people, and that's what you are technically when we start off in the game. You're indie. Like, you don't have two million dollars to set up a booth. Because if you did, you'd probably be somewhere else. <laughs> like freaking like using your like I don't know, spending your dough on a sports car or something, or making at least a new game and be all. Yeah. I don't know. But I will say they made a huge mistake with this game. Okay. At least in my opinion, hopefully it's been fixed or whatever, but if you remember before you got the game and stuff like that, say once I showed you about the anti-piracy thing, I was like, I actually approve of that, I want to go and buy this game. I went on their official site to look, and in big capital letters, with a big square and shit, it said, you need Windows 8 to play this game. And I was like, oh, okay. But I don't, I don't have Windows 8. Exactly. That's why I was like, they should have they should have advertised better that it was available for Windows Seven. Oh, oh it's like okay, that doesn't make sense because I don't have Windows Eight. Oh, yeah, but, which means I'll have to go and buy that. Like, I'll probably buy that next week or so. I'd say it was a tiny bit laggy and stuff, but I was watching a YouTube video while running Skype while like doing other <laughs> stuff, and my computer's crap. So I'm going to say that it works perfectly fine. <laughs> That reminds me of one of my roommates in college where he would try to burn CDs and they'd mess up because he was, like, playing Quake and all this other crap at the same time. I I'd be like, gee, I wonder that. why it happened. Yeah, I know someone that's done that. <laughs> yeah. Now, I have been playing one other game. Mm -hmm. My friend, um, my gay friend that nobody knows except them, who's named Mark, he, um... Hi, James. <laughs> named Mark. Uh, oh, man. Phoenix. He um started playing Pokemon Gold again, so I started playing that, and since and since then Pokemon Gold um this is Heart Gold, not the Gold like from the SP. Um, it okay. still holds up. It's still really good. You better have a Togepi, bitch. Wow. Hell yeah, Togepi. But actually, one time, like when I was in freaking Orange County Community College, I had the um Togepi on my Poke Walker. And uh, I had Togepi on my poker walker. That just sounds like a euphemism. <laughs> One day in college, I had a Togepi on my poker walker. Oh yeah, <laughs> if you know what she means. But see, I, I dropped that in my math class, like, and literally like thirty seconds later, when I went to um pick it up, um, 
because I didn't instantly pick it up because it was just under my desk. And the, I tried to pick it up, but, like, the teacher was like, pay attention, and goddamn it. And I'm like, so I couldn't get it. But then, like, literally 30 seconds when I managed to get it, like, it was already gone. Somebody took it, and I lost the guy in the crowd who took it. And I was at the point in the game where you need to show Togepi to frickin' um, Professor Oak so I couldn't continue the game. Oh. <laughs> so I literally had to reset the whole game. Wow. It was pretty terrible. Yeah. But it's still really fun, and yay for Dragonites, because that's the first thing I always do when I get the game, is get my Dragonite. Or Dratini, and then level 55, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, it still holds up. It's pretty awesome. Nice. I do miss the red, 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 blue, yellow, gold, and silver era. I don't like any of the Pokemon from any of the other ones. Hell, I barely like the Pokemon from gold and silver, besides Togepi. <laughs> yeah. I'm biased. Well, I have to laugh. Like, over time, you go to the Pokesitter, there's a Pokemon egg that we have no idea how it got there. And I saw a comment yeah. where they said that, and you see two Rhydons, like, going at it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Pokemon? Do you remember when Ditto used to be this cool Pokemon that transformed into various forms? No. And now he's a whore. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, here's my big, fat, ugly Snorlax. Ditto, do your <laughs> shit. Ditto is also multisexual, because if you ever put any Pokemon with a Ditto, it'll automatically make one of that Pokemon that was originally the baby form of. So regardless I... if that Ditto is guy or girl, it'll still make babies with whatever. I know. It's the Simon of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I play a Pokemon game, I know what I'm naming my Ditto now. <laughs> <laughs> Name it Simon. Name uh, it four. Fab Dango. <laughs> uh, hi, Simon, if you listen to this. <laughs> He's probably not. He's probably not. I don't know anyone is. I think Pachu does. That's about it. Anyway, what games did you play, Mole? Uh, I, I got four this week. Boom! Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on Wii U. Already talked about that. Boom, that's out of here. Number two, Resident Evil 6. Do you remember last week when I was talking about how much fun that game was and how much it started to feel more closer to the originals when I was playing Leon's campaign? I do remember. They threw that all out the window, literally, when a guy f goes out the window of the train, gets injected into the neck with this serum type thing, turns into this big fucking cat with a scorpion-like tail, and then says, ha-ha, I'm invincible, ha-ha, jumps across to the next train just to demonstrate he's invincible, runs along the train, hits into this other oncoming train, knocks it fucking flying in the air, while it joins onto its tail and looks like a fucking machine gun effect. <laughs> and I'm like, oh god. Then he jumps back over to us, turns back into his hero, into like his human form, it's like, yeah. That just happened. <clears throat> I'm like, that was all via cutscene. Then he turns back into the cat after he spoke again, and I have to fucking shoot him. And it's like, oh, it's so fucking dumb. And the worst part about it, do you remember what I just told you happens? Uh huh. The way you kill him is when you shoot him, your train hits him and runs him over. <laughs> <laughs> While he's in his big cat form. And I'm like, you just proved this wouldn't work. <laughs> but it's like, it's like it, it's gone from caring about being that that good to to being like close to the original ones. And now it, it's making me like, this is the most stupidest crap I've ever seen. And I see Capcom reporting recently. Oh, it didn't meet recent specifications, or oh, we do we we blame outsourcing. No. It, it's bad because it's fucking, it doesn't make sense. I would and like not, to point out... Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was going to say, I'm, I'm not insulting all Resident Evil games. I'm highly looking forward to Res the new one that's coming out this year, Resident Evil Revelations, that comes out this month, I should say. But what were you saying, Victor? I was just going to say that uh, in one of the stories in RE6, the one with, where he plays Jake or Sherry, there's a part where he jumps over a helicopter on a motorcycle. If you tell anyone that's played Resident Evil games, there's a part where you jump a motorcycle over a helicopter, they should automatically be like, no, 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 no we're done here. <laughs> oh, how about this? If you told anyone who's played Resident Evil that essentially you would spend an entire mission or two saving someone's sister, 
you save their sister, she then goes, <laughs> turns into this, like, cocoon, which then hatches an exact replica of herself out of it, but with, like, poison ivy veins, and then goes, da -da -da -da, and turns into, like, a fucking scorpion. Spends ages trying to fucking kill you, shooting shit with its tail, and going, ah, with claws and shit. And then, when you finally kill it, the other person that's on your team will stop, run across, grab her by the arm, be like, I'm going to help you, I'm going to revenge your death, and then let's go of a hand killing her. <laughs> what? Brain bone. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually going to say something before I move on. Resident Evil 6, highly recommend people pick it up, just because of how fucking bad and almost laughable most of the shit in this has become. Next one. example of what not to do. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is like, basically this is like what if Family Guy wrote, wrote Resident Evil. <laughs> That's the kind of lazy, cliche, not even trying shit this is. Hi, Seth MacFarlane. <laughs> As if he watches our shit. Now I picture in like a in like a stereotypical Family Guy cutscene, it cuts to him on his computer, and he hears that, and he goes, "You son of a bitch!" and punches the monitor. <laughs> and now another cutaway gag where he's looking at you and be like, "You stole my gimmick." Yeah. And then just does like the narrow eyes thing and then fight you yeah. like a chicken. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, next one. Dragon Age 2 completed the game. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Not as good as the first game, yeah, like I said last time, blah, 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 blah. I really enjoyed what was going on. I completed my romance. My romance went in a completely different way to what I thought. But woohoo, I completed it, and I was 100% with the elf chick at the end. Yay. I had one of the most hardest bosses I've had in a game, which was really fucking fun. I enjoyed that, because I do like difficulty and stuff, so yeah, it was pretty fun, and as like I said, I plan to play this again in the future, in the next month or so, and I'll buy it with, I'll buy the DLC for it, and I'll replay through it with the DLC, and this time as a different character, like a mage or some shit. I see, did the elf chick mind that she paid for sex a lot of times? She did not <laughs> seem to mind that I paid for sex. Nice, she's the perfect girl for you, you're not naive in real life. I've heard the elf that's a, that's chick... That's a keeper. Yeah, I've heard the elf chick... When you read her notes, yeah, my neighbors won't like me. <laughs> According to my neighbors in my high-class society, the elf chick is basically pissing my neighbors off by walking around the streets with no shoes on, stopping and picking all their flowers out their garden. <laughs> it, it just mentions that in one of her notes, and I'm like, okay, I'm cool with that. None of my neighbors seems to have flower beds, but okay. <laughs> but, None of them are fighter than the fi uh, harder than the final boss, so I don't care what they think. <laughs> yeah, actually, ironically, the final boss much easier than the boss I fought two chapters ago. The the big guy I told you about, mm. which it stands to reason because if you look at the Dragon Age opening cinematic thing before you hit start. It's literally a version of the character Hawk battling with him one on one with the fucking blades and shit. He's not even battling with the main person, he's battling with them. <laughs> but yes, last game Pirates of the Caribbean. The Lego version. How is that? Lego Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm enjoying it. It's weird going back to a Lego game after. Lego City Undercover and Lego, Lego Batman 2 that doesn't use the voice actors because it's now back to the silent slapstick funny but it's still hilarious and it's got little touches in it which is definitely worth checking out like Lego Jack walks with a strut and does his run with his little arms out at the side and I'm like this is the greatest thing ever he walks like he walks exactly like a Lego version of someone we know. Hi, Simon. Nah. But yeah, so yeah, that was the end of the games we played this week. Pretty fun. There was another one I was going to add to the list, but I'll do that next week. You don't have to watch this now with all these references. <laughs> uh. 
And and now it's the opinion piece. Unlike the other opinion pieces, this isn't going to be a topic as such. It's going to be, well, it is a topic, but it's not going to be an opinion one way or the other on a subject. It's going to be an opinion on it. This time we've gone with, and we're going to do this now and again, media to do with video games. This one is Dragon Age Dawn of the Seekers. And we're not going to go into too much detail about the film and overanalyze it and shit like that. This isn't Rise from the Airwaves. <laughs> or Showtime. <laughs> In the first ten minutes of the film, we need the... Or the Gaming Grotto. Yeah. Wait, actually, technically this is the Gaming Grotto. <laughs> That's why I was laughing. <laughs> I know. But yes... <laughs> But no, we're not going to overanalyze it, but Dragon Age, Dawn of the Seekers, take us away, Anastasia. Well, partly, the, some, one, my main like, thing I don't like with the characters is both the guys and the girls kind of look alike, and the, the ang it could be the angle that I was watching it, but I know they have different like hair colors or something, but their faces look so similar, and I'd be like, that guy's so hot, oh wait, no, that's the chick, the guy's over there, so I get confused. I kind of want to point out. I want to. Yeah. I kind of want to point out the horrible thing because this is an anime. They're all meant to be Japanese. I know. <laughs> and they're saying they all look alike. They do because like, the guy and the girl look in, and if they're gonna be like romantic or whatever, like it's like he's kind of doing himself a little bit. Oh, I, I'm gonna. I'm getting. That's a what he did before he met her. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was getting a message in my ear from Rick to say let this let this one go. <laughs> Like, seriously, like, they look like the goddamn same person. So I'd be like, yeah, he's hot. Oh, wait, no, that's the girl. The guy's over there. Oh, he's so hot. Oh, shit, the girl again. Damn it. <laughs> what you're telling us is you're attracted to females. That's why I chose to take from that sentence. <laughs> no, I thought it was the guy. I'm <laughs> sure. I'm sure that's your story and you're sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, um, this movie, like, I have a similar feeling to this movie as I felt to um, watching the Avatar, you know, with the blue people. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, um, not like Last Airbender. Um, I always have to yeah. say blue people movie. And then people go, oh, the Smurfs, you love the Smurfs? And I'm like, uh. But, <laughs> <laughs> like, kill me now. But, like. Smurf age. <laughs> The frickin', it looks really col colorful, and it has, like, that Doctor Who kid special animation, and that looks cool, and I like, like, the vividness of all, of all like, the animation colors and the eyes and everything, that's so pretty, but... This must be if he kicked ass. Support, like, story-wise, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I think that's the main problem. It was like, yeah, they're doing this thing, and they go off on their adventure, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Like, I don't know, I just, I, I didn't care for the characters, I couldn't relate to them, other than this guy is hot, possibly, if he is the guy, I think he is, not a girl, um, <laughs> and I don't know, I just I, get into it. I will say this game, well not this game, this film, didn't seem to know its audience. <laughs> I what do you, was trying what, to target everyone and no one at the same time. Yeah, the reason I say that? The, f the fans of the series know the backstory of this world and what, what, how these things are meant to function and stuff a bit. We didn't need the overly long narration at the beginning. Yeah. They could have cut that shit down and just explained it better. As well as that, I don't like the fact it's uh, way too uh, against the game a bit where... At one point, the, one of the majors summons a herd of fucking ogres, and they're taking them out like they're fucking nothing. <laughs> Those ogres are fairly tough bad guys in the games. Yeah, admittedly in the second one, eventually I got to the point where I was like, yeah, okay, boom, 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 and I'm killing them easily. But, based on the game and based on that one, the only reason I was able to do that is because in terms of how long I had elapsed in the game, I'd spent years fucking slaying these things <laughs> and practicing and, ho and like honing my craft because I was hawk. Was that the the scene where there were all the ogres in the uh, 
the like uh, golems and stuff. Yep. Yeah, because you get a party member golem at least in the first one, and she's pretty tough. So yeah, <laughs> even on top of the ogres, the golems are pretty hard to fight. And they're just like dispatching them by the tens. Technically, wasn't the golem DLC? Yes, I think it was. Uh, yeah, I think I got it free with the special edition. But yes. Yeah, I ended up I ended up getting that DLC. I like that. I can't remember if yeah, it was included or not, but I, I like that. Yeah, DLC. she's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> what was a she? I played, um, I played. Yeah, the... at some point you find out. Sorry if I ruined it. No, no, you didn't ruin it. I uh, just may have forgotten that. Girl. I just may have forgotten. That. I always assumed it was a guy because it was like. Whoa. I know. Well, it even had a, a like a guy's name, but at some point, like near the end, you find out it's a girl, and they're all like, "Wait, what?" She's like, "What?" Yeah, it was a female. What? <laughs> You're just like, oh, "Okay." And then suddenly you get the option to romance her, and she crushes you horribly. Yes. Oh, man. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair walks up. Hey, you should just punch us through the wall. See, when I played the first Dragon Age and stuff, like, when I played that, I didn't finish it because it was, like, meh. But um, I played the first one, and during the first half of the game, I was actually really invested. I liked the characters, and they didn't look all the same. And there was, like, this really hot dude that I was totally romancing and everything. And I, go, I, was, I was invested. I was invested in the story and everything for, like, the first half. And this, this had not the same feel, like, at all. Like, it was, it was like, <laughs> this is, like, if they, like, tried to, I don't know, I don't know, I guess I don't know who the target audience I imagine children, but, like. Yeah, they did. It, it had a lo- different look. It was more cell shaded or whatever. I'll admit, I kind of liked the art in this in the film. It, it looked it looked attractive, especially for the budget it had, because it was a low budget director DVD film. Let's face it. But for the budget it had, it did a pretty good job with it. It looked cool. There was some faults in it, but how does Richter feel? Yeah, I. I actually liked uh, the designs in it, so I thought the animation was good. I really liked the dragon and that uh, demon monster at the end, uh, without spoiling much. But I thought they looked really cool, at least uh, design-wise and animated and stuff. Uh, overall, overall, I actually liked the film. I thought the plot was kind of kind of predictable, you know, kind of cliche in a lot of ways. Like you could figure out with reasonable accuracy what was going to happen but it was still fairly entertaining and it, it was that was all that was that's something that was almost a shame it's clichedness yeah. because let's face it the dragon age games they're not that cliched in the stories yeah oh yeah there's a lot of twists in there which are unbelievably enjoyable they're one of they're probably the best especially because of bioware bioware has a tendency to make the best character driven mm-hmm. stories and their games are pretty good i, I, I give them that but uh, last thing before we all close this one off, but I thought they should have gone a different route with the film. I, I I mentioned this to, I think it was Richter, they should have gone the route of Dungeons and Dragons, Scourge of Worlds. Seriously, if you haven't seen that film, go and check that one out, or just Google it to see what I mean. Basically, it's an all CGI animated film set in the Dungeons and Dragons world, but here's the, here's the kicker. You get to make choices during that film. It's just all one giant film. It's only halfway through, like, like the campsite, different people are like to him, no, I think we should do this, I think we should do this, and they're arguing, and then suddenly it stops and says, which one, is, well, which one will he pick, as you're like, picking with the choices the main guy gets. That's perfect for a Bioware film. Yeah. Uh, they did that with a Luigi video, where it's Luigi's Haunted Mansion, and he had, like, Friggin' like 30 different videos, and there were like retarded options too that are just for fun. Like, you could save the princess, or you could get high in the bathtub with Toad. <laughs> and there's a video that's just for that. And like, you could make from like actual story choices, which are in there too, but like stupid choices. To like, like, um, Daisy, um, he, Daisy's like all freaking tied up, and it's like, and you can either choose, um, untie Daisy, or, um, assume that she likes bondage. So, I'm going to assume that the drugs and bondage just wasn't licensed. So, um, so he's like, oh, I saw a click, oh, he's into bondage. So Luigi starts tying himself up too, and he goes, okay, the safe word is Luigi, and like, and he goes into it and stuff. 
And it, it, it was really fun for like a YouTube experiment video, and it, there was like a, like at least like thirty different videos and stuff. And each video itself was a choice. Nice. Like the story, if you just went straight through it and like without any like side path, the story itself was like fifteen videos. Ah, right, cool. Like five, ten minutes. And yeah, the scourge sco of the world thing I was on about. Yeah, they did that with that with the different choices. They even had choices on there which got you killed, and it says, yeah, you could have chose better. Do you want to rewind to your previous choice, and you can click and go back to making that choice again? Or do you want to start the entire adventure again? Which, it's either way. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. That does lend itself more to a Bioware experience. Yeah. But I don't think a lot of films are hit, especially this one, the director DVD one, it should have. I don't think it's quite hitting the same level that other ones have but at the same time it's better than some of the live action films mm. but yes I for this one I was your host Chris aka the mole well, joining joining me was geeky girl hello and stay at home dad gamer thank you and check us out next week on XGR XGR in the morning in the morning <laughs> Oh,